I want to introduce you guys to a new game called Lords Mobile. I've been playing this game for more than 40 days now without spending and have been enjoying it so far. It has a lot of similar mechanics to other strategy games, but also some of its own unique features which I'm going to be going over in this video. But before we get into that, I'd like to thank Amazon for sponsoring this video. There will be a link in the description and by using that link you'll be able to get the discounts that I'm going to be talking about right now. Amazon coins are available on Android devices in the following countries. By using them, you'll be able to save up to 20% on in-app purchases for large mobile as well as other games that are available on the Amazon App Store. My link is for the US. But if you're from another country where Amazon coins are available, you can simply change the country on the Amazon website and then buy coins from there. Once you click my link below, you'll be taken to this web page from where you'll be able to buy 10,000 Amazon coins worth $100 for just $82 which is an 18% discount. However, you can get up to 20% discount by clicking on the Discover All Amazon Coins Packs button and buying 50,000 Amazon Coins for $400. Or you can also buy smaller quantities for lower discounts. To start using Amazon Coins, you simply need to follow the instructions on the webpage. Download the Amazon App Store, then download the game from there and you'll be able to start using Amazon Coins. Lords Mobile can also be downloaded on Windows 11 if you're from the US. So if you're using an Android device and you're from one of the countries where Amazon coins are available, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be using Amazon coins because the discounts are excellent and it also helps support the channel. Okay, so now let's get back to the topic of this video. The first topic I want to cover is buildings. The main building in this game is the castle because you can't upgrade any building beyond the level of your castle. Then there are production buildings for the five different resource types in this game. Food, stone, timber, ore, and gold. Then there are barracks where you can train different types of troops. The game only has four tiers and I've been able to unlock tier three troops so far. I'll be able to get tier four troops after I max out my castle at level 25. There's the vault which protects your resources from getting plundered by enemies. You have hospitals which prevent your troops from dying in battle. The workshop lets you make equipment. The trading post lets you share resources with guild members. The embassy increases your reinforcement capacity and the battle hall increases your rally size. Then there's the academy where you can do different types of research. This includes research for unlocking higher tier troops as well as research that can reduce their cost by 30 to 40 percent depending on their tier. The thing that I like about the academy is the fact that doing research actually has a significant impact on stats. Each troop specific research in the military category gives you 135 percent more stats. For research, I'd recommend focusing on maxing out construction speed first because the construction times are quite long at higher levels. And once you do that, you can then focus on monster hunting and military. Now, as I said earlier, the game also has some of its own unique features. And so the buildings that we're going to be seeing now are quite unique. At least I personally haven't seen them in any other games. The first building is the Monster Hold, which as the name suggests, holds all of your monsters. They're known as familiars in the game and each familiar gives you different types of buffs. For example, most of my familiars boost the production of different resources. In order to get these familiars, you need to get these items called Pacts. I've been hoarding my packs for quite a while now, so let's open them and see what I get.
Then you have the spire where you can make these packs using a special resource called anima along with regular resources. Now to get anima you need to build these special buildings called springs which produce anima over time. Finally there is the gym where you can train your familiars and level them up to make them stronger. And now the last building that I want to talk about is my favorite building in the game and that is the treasure trove. This is a building that you unlock at castle 17 and it basically acts like a bank that pays you interest on your gems. All you need to do is invest a certain amount of gems into this building for 30 days and at the end of 30 days it will give you back the initial amount of gems you invested along with a huge interest on your gems. At the moment I can only invest 10,250 gems and get an 85% interest on those gems. So when I get back my gems at the end of 30 days, I'll get back 18,962 gems in total. However, as I level up this building to its max level, level 9, I'll be able to invest up to 20,000 gems and get a 105% return on my investment. But that's not the end. There's also a research in the army leadership section that'll boost my max investment capacity from 20,000 to 30,000. So eventually, I'll be able to reach a point where I'm getting over 30,000 gems a month just from this building. Now gems can be used to get a lot of different items in the game, but one of the most useful items that it can get you is shields. A 1 day shield costs 1000 gems, so with 30,000 gems a month, I'll basically be able to shield 24-7 for completely free just using the gems that I get from this building while I still keep earning gems from other sources. This is why the treasure trove is my favorite building in the game. So now that we've covered most of the buildings, let's talk about the Verge Way. This is a game mode where you get to use different types of units, spells, and heroes in battle to reach higher stages in the Verge Way. You can get some free cards daily from the Verge chest and I've personally been hoarding a lot of these cards for a while now which means I can do a lot of upgrades in this video. Okay, so now that we're done with the upgrades, we can challenge the next stage and see how it goes. All you need to do in this game mode is place your hero and unit cards wherever you want them on the battlefield and they'll do all of the work for you. For spells, you can use them whenever there are clusters of enemies to do a ton of damage to them. Since I just did a ton of upgrades, this stage should not be a problem for me now that my troops are extremely overpowered.
So that was the Verge way. It's quite a fun game mode and requires a lot of strategy, especially while facing tougher opponents. The next topic I want to cover is heroes. Heroes are your helpers in battle. You can use them while attacking other players and also while defending your castle. You can also send them out to kill monsters as well. As far as I know, there are 22 heroes in the game that you can max out for free and 30 heroes that are not free. There are three ways of upgrading your heroes. You can either level them up by increasing their experience You can rank them up by giving them equipment, and you can increase their grade by collecting their medals. Apart from using them in battles and to hunt monsters, the heroes can also be used in two other places. The first one is the arena. This is the second best way of getting gems in the game after the treasure trove. The arena is a place where you can select five of your strongest heroes to compete against heroes of other players. The higher your rank in the arena, the more gems you'll be able to get every 3 hours. At the moment, I'm in the top 2000 so I get 46 gems every 3 hours and that means 368 gems per day. If you're able to get into the top 100 eventually, you'll be able to get 1000 or more free gems per day which will again be enough for you to shield 24-7. The second way of using your heroes is the hero stages. These are battles where you get to use any 5 of your heroes to compete against opponents that keep getting stronger as you make progress. These stages give you all the items that you need to max out the free heroes in the game, so you need to make sure that you're doing them as frequently as possible. Now I'll enter into a battle just to show you what this mode looks like. So once you enter into the battle, you'll be able to see your hero's HP and MP at the bottom of your screen. While most of the battle takes place automatically, you still have control over your hero skills. Once your hero's MP bar is full, you can drag the skill on an enemy or a group of enemies to target them and deal damage to them. Healing skills don't need to be dragged since they heal all of your heroes. So that was the campaign mode. I also wanted to cover my overall strategy in this game. For now, my aim is to not train more than one march so that I can stay unshielded in the game while hiding all of my troops in this building called the shelter. Once I'm able to get more than 1000 gems per day by getting a higher rank in the arena, upgrading my treasure trove and from guild chests, i would start using shields 24-7 and train a lot more troops. Right now I've been getting a ton of resources from events and guild gifts, so I managed to almost make it to castle 20 with almost no resource gathering. Eventually I'll have to gather resources to be able to upgrade buildings, but I'm hoping that by then I'll be able to shield 24-7. So that's my review of the game Lords Mobile. If you want to download the game, you can find the link to it in the description below. So that's all I had for you guys in this video. I hope you guys found the video helpful. Thanks for watching the video guys and I will see y'all in the next one.